Hi, I'm Pearl Thompson and I'm with Mental Health Society of Greater Victoria. I'm one of the co-presidents there and today we're joined by Lauren Rumiel and she is from Foundry Victoria. So thank you for joining us, Lauren. Yeah, hi Pearl, thank you for having me. Great, so um, we'll just hop right into the questions. For those who aren't familiar with Foundry and what Foundry does, can you give us a little bit of a description? Yeah, for sure. Um, so Foundry started, I guess, back in like 2018, 2019. It's a province-wide initiative. So there are pockets of Foundries all over greater, you know, all over BC. And um, we've been here in Victoria since January of 2018, I think, 2019. I'm terrible with dates, but um, we were formerly like the Victoria Youth Clinic. And so becoming Foundry allowed us to basically become like a wellness hub um, so we partnered with a bunch of different organizations around town. So here we have like Discovery Youth and Family Services, GT Hiring, we have partners with Island Health. And so we all operate under one location and we all work together as an integrated model to provide services to young people. So we are like a walk-in medical clinic that primarily does like mental health and addictions medicine. And then we have drop-in counseling so any day you can just like walk in and speak with a counselor. We also have like an outreach team. So we are like out in community doing more like practical things, more like case management and support of young people, like applying for income assistance. I'm having difficulty at school. I need someone to come and advocate with me, with my teacher, that kind of stuff. And then a huge peer support team as well. So we have um, a lovely peer support worker, Maud. She runs all of our like wellness drop-in groups. Um, she does like check-ins and connections that are a bit different than meeting with a counselor. It's definitely more like a peer mentor, life coach type relationship. And we also have um, a peer support worker from Transcare BC and Lux is here to just like help young people just like navigate the gender identity systems and um, just like connecting them with services, helping with name change forms, all that kind of stuff. Um, did I miss anything? I think, yeah. I think I covered everything. We are a huge team and I'm so sorry if I forgot anyone off my list of people. <laughs> yeah. No, that's okay. No. It sounds great. Um, and right now, as you know, this is like a really unprecedented time with COVID-19 and such. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering how is your service, how is your service like adapted to that and changed? Yeah, for sure. Um, so we were like, we have not really shifted in any way other than we're not doing a lot of face-to-face -face work. So um, we've moved to a virtual like call-in or like video medical appointments and counseling sessions. Um, so basically we, our phone lines open at 1030 and instead of like queuing up outside our door, we now just get phone calls and young people can call in and just say a bit about what they're looking for, whether that's a doctor or counseling or outreach services. And we're just connecting over the phone, over text, over video platforms. Um, so really everything's been still like rolling here kind of as normal, except for we're all working from home with only a few people on site at the office at any time. Great, so is the phone line that you mentioned like the first point of access right now? Yeah, that would be right now. So that would be the 250-383-3552 number. And that just goes to our front desk. If, you are, if young people already have connections to any of our counselors or staff, they can reach out on their cell phones or over Facebook. We get a lot of Facebook and Instagram messages and questions and things like that. So um, lots of different ways to get in touch with us. And we'll connect you all back to our, our main front desk person. Cool. Um, so part of what we do with the Mental Health Society of Greater Victoria is help people um, like combat certain obstacles that come up when they're seeking support. Mm -hmm. um, with the Foundry dealing with young people, what's, what are some of the most common obstacles that you find young mm -hmm. people face when they're seeking support? Yeah, um, generally like pre-COVID, like the biggest obstacles people I find have are just like making that first step of just asking. It's really hard to admit to someone that you're struggling and, um, and just like, that initial ask is often like the biggest hurdle to overcome for folks. Um, when we are like fully open and running, I mean, you know, obstacles here are just that we're so busy 
um, when we are at full capacity and doing like face-to-face -face stuff. So it can be hard to call on the phone a bunch of times or wait in line days and days in a row to get in to see us. Um, and it's just like goes to kind of show like in Victoria, there's generally like a long wait list for young people to access mental health services. We have doctor shortages, you know, all of these things that make it, it tricky for sure. Yeah. Um, so what's something that you would suggest to someone who has faced some of those obstacles and might be feeling kind of discouraged or like they've hit a bit of a block? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like keep trying, right? Um, reach out to whomever in your life you're close with. I mean, talking to a friend, we have a lot of young people that show up together with their buddy and go through the whole intake process and counseling process together. So use whoever you have in your life as your support. We've had young people like bring their pet with them because that's what they needed to be able to do this process. So we are always trying to be like accommodating and welcoming. Um, but yeah, just don't give up. Um, one of the things that's kind of like COVID has sort of changed us a bit, I think, is that we're easier to access for a lot of folks. Um, so many counseling services uh, have shifted up to be able to provide counseling from home, text-based stuff. So like I think right now, it's kind of way easier than ever before for young people to be able to just like lay in bed and shoot a text message to someone and get support on the other end of the phone. I've had a lot of young people that struggle with like really high anxiety that were just like finally like the world is tailored to my needs. I was able to see my doctor. I was able to talk to a counselor. Like I didn't have to leave my bed. <laughs> um, and they were like, this is great. But for other people, it's been hard, right? And they miss that that face-to-face -face connection. Um, and so we've been trying to be creative with like video platforms and, and things like that. And I think we'll continue to, to add more like social connections over virtual platforms as we continue through this time. Cool, those are some really good suggestions, thank you. Um, so you mentioned young people like the importance of reaching out to a friend or to a loved one. So what is, what is some advice that you can share for people who are supporting a young person who's in distress. Yeah, I think like just some of the main things for parents or anyone is just kind of like open door policies, like no, like no judgment, just being like, yes, like just let me tell me whatever it is that's going on for you. Um, and really just like, you know, parents don't be afraid to ask questions, don't be afraid to like, you know, give that extra push of encouragement because sometimes right now we people are needing a lot of motivation to get out of the house, um, things like that. And just, we have like parents reach out yourselves for support. Um, we have parent peer support people here um, that just help coach and guide parents through the process. So a lot of parent navigation, a lot of just like venting, like yeah, like parent vent to me <laughs> about what's going on and we will help strategize and help support you so you can support your young people, so. Great, that mm -hmm. sounds really helpful. <laughs> um, so what are a few coping strategies that you can share with our followers? Mm -hmm. I think like coping strategies specifically like for COVID being stuck at home, it's really been about like lowered expectations. Like I've had a lot of young people really struggling to adapt to online learning. Um, a lot of young people really worried about like what's gonna happen next year, I'm gonna be behind. And it's just like reminding that, you know, everyone right now is doing the best that they can with what we have, which is sometimes fairly limited. And, um, and just like allow yourself like permission to take a day when you need it, practice some self care, come up with your like five key things that make your day go from like, okay to good. Right. So like, what are you, the things that you need? Like drinking water, sunshine, talking to my close friend, you know, eating food every day, getting a good night's sleep, being active, all these different things. And then just truly really trying to like, you know, keep up some kind of sense of normalcy, some kind of sense of schedule. And um, yeah. And if you are like struggling to the point where you're like, I got to go see my best friend, like, you know, do it and practice some harm reduction and just remember to like wash your hands, stay six feet away when you come home, change your clothes, have a shower, all those things like being responsible, um, taking care of your needs, taking care of other people at the same time. 
So it sounds like you're saying it's really important to allow yourself anything you need to cope and get through the day and just be compassionate to ourselves. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Great. So that's about it for my questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add uh, before um, we Yeah, I think like just, you know, really congratulating all of the young people out there like Victoria and BC. We really just did so well following Dr. Bonnie's directions and um, you know, like, I feel like now that I know things are kind of opening up a bit, I'm actually having a harder time staying at home so much, but just like sit tight and like hang in there and everyone's done awesome. And I can't wait to get back seeing more people face to face. And, um, there's also just so many different ways to, to, to reach out and to access different supports. Um, I did forget to mention that Foundry BC has opened like a total virtual platform for all of British Columbia. So if you're watching this video from Nanaimo or like Prince George or wherever, anyone can call in and do drop in virtual counseling with a counselor um, through Foundry. So that number is 1833 Foundry and the O in the Foundry is a zero. Um, so that's 1833308. Six three seven nine. All right. Well, Lauren, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, and thanks for doing this. I look forward to seeing all the other interviews and videos you guys are posting. So perfect. Awesome. Thanks. Have a good day. Yeah. You too. Bye. Bye.